Hello everyone, welcome to an introduction to Yearwalk. Yearwalk is a horror adventure game set in the Swedish woods during the 19th century. It involves a lot of Swedish folklore, and in it, you set out on what is called a year walk, which is basically a Swedish vision quest. It originally came out on iOS a while ago, but it's now just recently come out on Steam in a new and improved version for PC. Actually just recently finished a full playthrough of this game, and I frankly, I think it's brilliant. So I'm hoping I can do justice to it and explain why I think so. So let's take a look at the first thing that is immediately obvious, and that is the graphics. This game is beautiful, ridiculously gorgeous. So here's how you move about. You don't actually see yourself. It's sort of a, a side-scrolling sort of thing. And yeah, it, it's just gorgeous. I mean, just look at the art. And the level of polish that they managed to put into this is extraordinary. There's so many small, fine details to how everything looks. The gentle falling of the snow, the slight wobble of the camera. You can see there's a bit of film grain too, which gives a, some extra texture to it. It's just gorgeous. Even just opening the menus. If I open the encyclopedia, just look at the way everything just gently blurs in the background. It's just... Everything about this... Everything about Year Walk just oozes polish. It is a gorgeous game. Okay, so we have a conversation to go do. So let's move on to it. You So you have the side-scrolling uh, type of movement, and you will reach pathways. Let me open up the map here. You'll reach pathways where you can move forwards or backwards. So here's one, moving forwards. So that's how you move throughout the world. So we need to go have a conversation with somebody at the mill. Of course, this is an introduction to the game, so it's going to be very light on spoilers, so don't worry about that. By the way, my year walk has not quite started yet. It's about to. Okay, so another thing that's great about it is the audio. The audio is really good. The music, the sound effects, everything. So, for this conversation that I'm about to have, let me pump up the audio so you can really hear it. So, enjoy. Time to go start our year walk. So as I'm sure you could hear, it sounds just the soundtrack and the sound effects are wonderful. They've done a great job with that. So let's go back to the cottage and start the year walk. I guess I've gone the wrong way. Think I need to go down one more? 
yeah, here we go. And this shows off actually how the puzzles work. So this is right before I start the year walk. As you can see, everything lights up when I mouse over it. And you click on everything to make it permanent. And this is how a lot of the puzzles work. They're very... I mean, this isn't really so much a puzzle. It's just a very cool way to start the game. But this is how a lot of the puzzles work and that they involve a lot of touching. They're very tactile. And it's really satisfying. So let me complete this. I think it's almost done. Missing a couple pieces here. There we go. It's the name of the game. Alright, so here we go. Now the year walk has started. And during your year walk, you'll encounter some very interesting creatures. You'll encounter everything that you see in this encyclopedia here. So to return to what I was saying about the puzzles, obviously I don't want to solve them, I don't want to spoil them, but the puzzles are very satisfying to complete. They're very tactile. Like, look at this. In this puzzle, and, well, all of them, they all involve touching and grabbing and moving. And this is no exception. This wheel, to spin it. To spin it, you actually grab it and you, you literally spin it. It's really, really cool, and that's how all of the puzzles go. It's really satisfying because you get to you get to touch everything and you get to grab everything. It's wonderful. It's just a very satisfying method of solving puzzles. And to make it even better, the puzzles are just they're well designed in terms of they're not ridiculously complicated or frustrating. Your walk actually has no inventory system whatsoever. So you're never going to find the sort of situation that you sometimes get in adventure games where you have maybe, say, 20 items in your inventory and you're just kind of trying to use everything on everything and attempt to find a solution. You'll never run into that. You don't even have an inventory. So the puzzles are... they're satisfying. They're really satisfying, but they're also not overly complicated. So they're not too simple. They're not too complicated. They're just right. They've just nailed them. With one exception. There's one exception that I'll talk about later. But overall, the puzzles are exceptional. And actually, there's something really cool about the way the puzzles are designed in this game is that you pretty much need to write down stuff. You need to write down puzzles and like little hints that you'll find and uh, especially shapes. You'll need to write down quite a few shapes to solve these puzzles. And... I think that's wonderful. I actually ended up filling up an entire page with notes to solve these puzzles, and I, I find that wonderfully satisfying. It really adds to the tactileness of it. Because you're not just grabbing stuff in-game, but you're actually, you know, you're actually writing notes. Like, scribbling notes on a piece of paper in an adventure game, I think, is wonderful. It's so satisfying to actually look at this thing in front of you on your, on your desk or whatever. That's just filled with notes to solve stuff in a game. It's really satisfying. I love that. And I love that they make it so you need to do that. It's really cool. So this encyclopedia here, which has all of these creatures and all of these things that you will encounter, is a really cool part of the game. So oftentimes when you have an encyclopedia or you're reading, you know, lore or notes in a game, it can often get really, really dry and really boring. I know a lot of people don't read notes and things like that. And I don't blame them, because often it's dry. Often it's not interesting. But in this case, they've done a really good job at actually making it interesting. For one, it's not filled with a million entries. This is, this is all that's in here, just these six entries in this encyclopedia. But they're so perfectly picked, because every single one of these entries is directly relevant to stuff that you do or see in-game. Like, all of these creatures, you will encounter. 
And you're walking is, of course, what you're actually doing right now. It's your vision quest. So everything here is very relevant to what you're doing. And in fact, it'll even help you solve puzzles when you read them. When you understand these creatures and how they work and the, the lore behind them. So you can directly relate what you read inside of these encyclopedia entries to what you're seeing and what you're doing. And that kind of immediate connection to what you're reading in the encyclopedia makes it actually interesting to read, which is pretty rare in games, I think. So I really like what they've done here. They've pared it down and they've made sure that every single thing in the encyclopedia is very relevant, which is wonderful. And even just moving through the encyclopedia is also a joy, just like everything else. It's very tactile. You can use the scroll wheel to just scroll through it, of course, but you can also just click and drag like this. So everything's just nice and smooth and polished. It's wonderful. So let's talk about the story. Obviously, I don't want to go too much in depth into it because that would spoil it. But let me just say, the story is, just like the game, brilliant. It goes places that I never, ever expected it to go. For example, what I mean about this. The first time you finish the game, it's not the actual end. In fact, it doesn't even say the end when you first finish it. Instead, what it actually does is it presents you with a mystery. When you first finish it, it gives you a clue. It tells you basically there's something more going on. And it gives you a hint. It gives you a couple hints about how to find out what that is. And so when I finished the game the first time, I thought, I thought it was exceptional. I thought it was an excellent game at that point already. And then I was intrigued by this mystery that it presented. And then I followed up on the mystery. And it took the game from being exceptional to mind-blowing. That's where the story goes places that I never would have expected. Before the, before the mystery that I explored, it was a really good game. And the story was really interesting and intriguing. But then after that, it went places I just never expected it to ever go. And it pretty much just blew my mind. So yes, if you go to play it, when you get to the end, the first end, and you're presented with the mystery, let me just say, you absolutely should follow up on it, because it is totally worth it. It is wonderful. Follow up on that mystery, figure out what's going on, you will find it very satisfying, I think. I certainly did. Okay, so I don't want to just... I don't want to just uh, shovel praise onto this game. It does have a few problems. Thankfully, v mostly minor. There's two very minor problems I have with it, and then one kind of medium. So one of the super minor things is that it lacks a lot of options. Here's the settings menu, and this is it. It is a 2D game, so I wouldn't expect there to be a huge amount of options, but it's missing some really basic stuff, such as audio sliders. There, there's no volume setting whatsoever. Which, of course, is not a huge deal, because you can just set the volume in on your computer outside of the game, but you really shouldn't have to. So it's a strange oversight. Another minor thing is that there's no manual save system of any sort, or, or even a chapter save system, so you can't just make a save and return to that specific point in the future. Instead, it simply saves wherever you're at when you close the game, and then when you start it back up, it uh, puts you right back where you were. Which is perfectly fine, but again, it would have been nice to have some more options and where you wanted to return. You know, if you wanted to return to a specific point, it'd be nice if you could make a manual save or, or at least some sort of a chapter system. But it doesn't have that. So those are the two really minor things. The one medium thing that I didn't like about it is... I talked about the puzzles being exceptional. And they were, but there's one puzzle, just one, that I think is horribly designed. I will simply say that it involves a couple of... It involves two letters. And if you get to a point in the game where you're trying to solve a puzzle that involves two letters, and you can't solve it. Maybe you can solve it. If you can, great. But if you can't solve it, let me just say, I think it's horribly designed, and you should probably just look up the solution, because I, I think it's a really stupid puzzle. In fact, I think it's so stupid that if you do get stuck on that puzzle... Uh, look in the description for this video, because I'm actually going to put the solution to it in the description. It's a really dumb puzzle. 
I, I don't know why it's there. It's totally... It totally doesn't fit with how brilliant everything else is. In fact, I believe I can demonstrate... Oh, no, never mind. Never mind. I was going to demonstrate something, but it actually haven't gotten to that point in the game yet. So I'm just walking around here. So those are the only... Those are literally the only three problems I have with it. Just two minor ones and... One kind of medium problem involving just one puzzle. All the others, though, are brilliant. Okay, so without spoiling everything, that's about as deep as I can go into it, since a lot of this involves the story. So I don't want to spoil that. So, Year Walk is available on Steam. For, as of right now at least, of course the price can always change, but right now it is about $6. And it took me about two to three hours to finish. For $6, experiencing such a brilliant game, one of the best games I've ever played, one of my favorite games of all time, to experience that for only $6, I think is a ridiculously good deal. I would have paid three times that, easily, and been really happy with it. I'm actually pretty amazed that it's so cheap. I think they might have priced it low because the iOS version is quite cheap. You know, differences between the mobile market and the PC market, I don't know. But yeah, it's a ridiculously good deal. Alright, so hopefully I've done this game justice. Again, I think it's completely brilliant. I love it. And I would highly recommend checking it out. So I'll have links in the description to where you can check out the main site and check it out on Steam. And if you have any further questions, I'd be happy to answer them, so feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching.